You are listening to the Food Means Business Podcast, which features the personal stories and secret ingredients behind what it's like to abandon your day job to start a CPG food and beverage business. I'm Janaba Johnson-Jones, former marketing executive turned entrepreneur and founder of food business incubator Hudson Kitchen. Join our community of fellow food business owners and subject matter experts to learn and laugh with us as we explore a startup world that's a little more culinary and a lot less corporate these days. This month, we are spotlighting Hudson Kitchen members, and today I'm so happy to introduce you to Marlon and Rachel. They are the founders of Yay Snacks. So welcome, guys. Hi, thank you for having us. Absolutely. So we start out with your story, so we'd love to hear kind of your, we call it a cubicle to CEO story, but wanted to find out what were you doing before you launched Yay Snacks? So hi, my name is Marlon Ramsey Chan. Um, I've been a content creator for just over 10 years now, I started creating content in 2011, um, you know, out of my house, my childhood home, and just watching people like me on the internet doing what they loved and one day dreaming that I could do the same. And so I moved down to LA in 2013 and pursued that passion full time. And I was able to kind of make a career out of it around 2014 and go full time with that. And I was able to create content since then. And and now I'm lucky enough to still be able to do that in my position while creating a company. That's awesome. Because most people say they want to, you know, create content and live off of it. But a lot of people don't. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was definitely not a linear route, but I wanted to keep it concise because I, I also know like the, the podcast is only like 30 minutes. <laughs> we have like a 30 minute run time. So I was like, I want to keep this short for everyone. No. But yes, like uh, lucky I had a lot of big wins that happened that uh, made it able for me to create content full time. So, yes. Awesome. So, Rachel? Yeah. Yeah. I think adding on to Marlon's story, my favorite part of his story is telling his parents he was going to college in LA, but going to acting school instead. Wait, what? Wait, wait. So, let's talk about it for I a just second. Add that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I love it because so. it's so, like, it's such a, it's so important to know for, like, later and, like, how important his family really is to him, but, like, him yeah. doing it because it was just so, like, aligned. It was there for him and he's so talented at it. You, you yeah, gotta, you uh, got to tell the story. So, go ahead, go uh, yeah, ahead. well, so for the people <laughs> listening, it's like with my parents, it's I think I don't know for uh, anyone else in the world, like it's easier to give them something they would understand. Right. Like I can't go, hey, guys, like this is my plan. I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to make these videos and magically I'm going to be able to pay your mortgage. Like that's just how the linear it doesn't process for them. Right. Right. So for me, I'm like, OK, I'm going to go to Northridge and I'm going to be a director. <laughs> it's like <laughs> something it's like still far fetched, but it's like they understand. And it's right. not like this massive lie because like I knew in my heart, like I'm going to make this happen somehow. But it's just easier for them to digest. And. I just, as Asian parents, they just, they worry a lot, you know, and I, I, I try not to like worry them too much. And I think if you ask them to this day, they had no idea. They just one day were just like, oh, like, okay, <laughs> like, this is like, this, okay, this is cool. Like people started in my small town, I'm from Stockton, California. People were just like, oh, we saw your son's video. And then my mom would be like, what? And then like, we saw you on this video. And she'd be like, what are you talking about? And eventually it kind of just built it from there. But yeah, that's, that's part of the, I think being, Having the dialogue with your parents, I think is really important. Don't lie yeah. to your family, kids, but telling them <laughs> why it lies, I think, to kind of have them understand um, is, is okay. <laughs> I mean, but you were doing something that didn't exist, you know, until recently. True. So it's like, how do you explain that thing? So I kind of get it. It is true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know how to explain it. Yeah. And, and luckily it worked out. Otherwise, they would just be very upset. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> no, it, it, Marlon had a plan. For me, it was all of my professional career. I've been very lucky enough to be able to be an entrepreneur. And my cubicle experience is probably going to be when I was interning in college in the fashion industry. And I loved it. Like I wanted to be an analyst and a buyer, like the usual, just like corporate route of entering, like finishing college and doing that. And that's what I figured I would do after college. But life presented its ways, like itself in different ways for me. And different opportunities that just made so much sense when they were in front of me that I couldn't say no, you know, and I was lucky enough to not have to say no. And I said, all right, first it was popcorn for the people, which was back my senior year of college. I was like essentially a part of a school community based organization where we like nonprofit consulted and helped to build a business plan for small businesses in our area. And it was a nonprofit and it was wonderful. And it was six years of doing that. And when I first met Marlon, 
completely by accident. Like popcorn happened by accident. It just fell into place. And then Marlon and I met completely by accident. Like I didn't even, I wasn't even the person he thought I was when he first said hi to me. Like he thought I was completely someone else. It was a, it was a mistaken identity case. <laughs> and and uh, in the end, he, it, it worked out perfectly. And this is, everything tells me that we are supposed to be where we are right now. Like with the team we have, Ben's not on here, but we love Ben. And Ben is the third one that yes. is so important to this team. And I couldn't have imagined like any better of a place to be and people to be here with. That's awesome. So tell us the how you met story because it is kind of a fun story. Okay. Um, you, gotta explain you, you want me to do from my perspective? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is last year. Is this 2022? This is 2022. 2022. This is 2022, March 2022. I'm going to my first Expo West ever. I I am just a bright-eyed, you know, young entrepreneur. Not even, I am an entrepreneur, but young, not even CPG founder yet. I just am like curious about it. You know, I was told by my girlfriend and a few other people to go check out this event. This is like the one of the biggest events in on, on the West Coast or yeah. even in the nation. And so I go there and it happens to be, you know, where one of the biggest creator events is too. So it's very parallel. So it's one of the biggest creator events called VidCon mm. happens at Expo West. I go there, I meet some friends and I'm actually introduced to a woman who runs the U.S. arm of Irving's. Is it Irving's, Rachel? Irving? Irving. No, you said so many times that's confused me. I'm going to say it's Irving's. <laughs> but, but. Irving's. Okay, we'll say Irving's. It's a huge like snack company in Singapore. They mm -hmm. import these like really like delicious salted egg chips and it's really popular in the US and in Singapore, like people wait in lines. So I met her that night, but everyone's wearing masks. Like this is like the tail end of COVID. Everyone's yeah. still wearing masks kind of. And so I meet her and the next day I'm going to like all these panels. Like I'm like, if I'm going to XOS, I want to, I, I have a free pass because I'm a creator, but I want to learn everything I can. I want to meet everyone I can. I just want to like absorb all of this because that's just my personality. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to be there. I went to a founders of color. That was the actual that was supposed to be the the panel. Let's yeah. say founders of colors. We're gonna have like four different CEOs talk about their experiences in the industry. And I'm like, oh, I am I am of color. I know I want to go like <laughs> look at these things. I wanna I want to also learn how to you know navigate this world. And last minute, that panel changed to the Mondelez collab, which is their Mondelez is talking about their kind of accelerator program. Right. Wrong, Rachel. Yeah. Right. Right. And so I was there and I was really excited also too, because I was like, oh, cool. Snack teachers. Like I'm, I feel like I have potentially a, a future of snacks in my pocket. So I want to come here and I want to listen also. So I'm just going to sit in my seat and I look over and I see the lady who I thought I met yesterday. I was like, I see this lady. I know <laughs> that's her. And for me, it's like, wow, it's going to be so rude if she saw me and I, I, and I see her and I'm like, I'm this guy that I don't say hi again because right. I definitely already met her. So I'm like, I need to say hi again because this is just not going to be okay. So I'm like, okay. So after we watch the panel, I walk over and I'm like, hey, it's me again from yesterday. So good, glad to see you at this panel too. And this whole time, this lady is just looking at me like, I don't know who you are or why you're talking to me right now or any of these things. And... I I start to register this really quickly and I'm like, oh, oh, OK, like maybe she doesn't know. Maybe this is the wrong person or like I don't know what's happening, but I just kind of like freeze. And I just the first thing I think to do is like I have uh, Ziploc bags of my snack in mm -hmm. my bag. And so I just go like, oh, this is my grandma's beef snack. And also like uh, it's really <laughs> nice to meet you. And I just like well, run away. I right. think if that's <laughs> what happened, Rachel. But yeah, I, I remember like giving you this bag, right? It's a Ziploc bag full of beef crisps, but my grandma's beef crisps in there. And I just say like, uh here you go. And I just like run away basically. And that, that's how we first initially met. That is crazy. So, okay. So, <laughs> okay. So that's fine. So you run away, but you also end up reconnecting, right? So give us, give us a little yeah. bit of that, Rachel. Marlon wasn't as timid as he, <laughs> he, he had more confidence and I was proud that he did because it didn't make me feel like I was eating this questionable snack in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> I mean, if you first saw it, it was literally just a Ziploc bag with a random sticker on there. Right. And I was like, I don't know you. You're feeding me food and I should not eat this. So like if he was more timid, I would have probably not eaten it. You know what I mean? Because I would have been yeah. like, oh, what is he doing? Where is this possibly from? Like, I, I don't know. But he was very nice. We shortly figured out that I was not the person he was, talk he was talking to yesterday. But he was like so kind and like welcoming. And he was like, hey, I'm also meeting like other. Like I talked about my background that I was um, – running popcorn for the people, all that kind of stuff. And that we were part of the program for Mondelez that mm -hmm. year. 
and I was explaining it to him and like it was a small like dialogue but he was very nice and he was right. like oh I'm also like hanging out with other friends later this evening if you're interested in like meeting other people and I was like yeah sure maybe you know but I I had my other agenda and I just met this person who wasn't actually the person I thought who thought <laughs> I was so I was like I'm not gonna you know but he gave me his business card I actually ended up trying the product later in my hotel room might I add alone? And I was like, if I was just poisonous, he would have tried to poison me and made me eat it when I was there, not when like I'm gone. So I somehow something told me that it was safe to eat. It was delicious. And um, I saved it for my boyfriend to try because David and I just love like finding new snacks. Like some of our dates are literally just in the grocery aisle, you know, so. I do that too with my husband. That's what we do on Saturdays. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're grocery people. That's yeah. kind of weird. That's amazing. Okay. I love I love a good grocery date, yeah. You no, know, I think I think it's within you. you. You can't choose to want to do that. You just, it's naturally something. And I'm grateful that I found someone to uh, do that with. <laughs> but yeah, it was a moment of like, we think back to it, and I feel like that moment was so clear in my head. Never would I thought that this person who walked up to me, I picture what Moreland was wearing. He had his nice poofy hair. He had his <laughs> denim jacket on, and he had a nice tote bag with a bunch of little beef snacks in there. And I was like, what is, you know? But, like, <laughs> that moment was so, like, as Marlon would call it before, serendipitous. And whatever put us in that room at the same time, I, I think it was like this was meant to be something bigger than we, you know, ever thought when we first met. So, yeah. So, yeah. so, so tell us about the product. So, so, yeah. So we have it somewhere here for you in studio, obviously. Cause, I mean, well, it's made there where you're at. But <laughs> my pod I can, I can eat as much as I want, just uh, yes. FYI. You have the, the super awesome secret ability to do that. Um, but but Ye's is my grandma's take on beef jerky. You know, she had no idea how to make her own beef jerky. So she was curious on how to make that. And so she ended up slicing really thin beef and dehydrating a lot longer than regular jerky and ended up making this like delicious, crispy, savory, salty, spicy snack that tasted good to her. And uh, for us, Ye's is an inspiration for my grandma. That's a premium take on that. And our mission is to bring a taste of Cambodia to every single home. It's really good. Like, I'm not <laughs> just saying that. Like, it's really good. Like, I, and I give it to people and they, like, they want it more and more and more. So I think it's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's awesome to hear it. You know, like, I like it and that's what pulled me into this in the first place. But it's like, it's validation when you got all that great feedback at the fancy food show yeah. and just like giving it to people in our, in our kitchen. Like, and it's just like, I'm like, Hey, I'm like, Chef Pete, like, I need you to try this. And he's like, anytime, anytime you need me to try it. I'm there. <laughs> like I'm already here. And, but it's like, it's just, it's a whole feeling. Like when you're eating it, you're not sure what to expect because it's not like people are like, Oh, beef jerky. But we, Marlon's genius girlfriend thought of this wonderful thing where on the um, bag it says artisanal beef jerky, but it's crossed out and it says crisps. Yeah. And it's because like that's the best way to describe it. It's like, first of all, if I said beef crisps, you would think like, what is that really? Right. right. Yeah. But the fact that we're trying to like transition people's mind to thinking about it in a little different way makes more sense instead of having to like long windedly explain what it is. So it's it's a labor of love and a 24 hour labor of love and production is always a great time with this. But in doing this whole thing, we really, it's a big symbol of how much grandma wanted this product to be it to help support his, her grandchildren, yeah. you know, and her family. And so, I mean, yay means grandmother in um, Cambodian, Khmer, yeah. but in Khmer, but in English, it's just a happy feeling. Yeah. And that's yeah. what we hope that everyone feels when they're eating this because that's how we feel. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so so cool. that's the exact kind of feeling and like mindset we want happy people to feel when they, when they open a bag of yays. It's just the happiness. And I think you got to witness that firsthand, like kind of letting people sample it at yeah. the fancy food show. You know, it's like, that's like my favorite thing. I love showing my friends new foods or, you know, going to different places or Rachel's in town. We want to go to different restaurants or when I'm in town, Rachel takes me to different restaurants to just blow my mind. Being able to do that with your own product or having a product that you're a fan of is like really cool. And being able to do that on a mass scale, like that's all we could really hope for and dream of. So we took a uh, yay snacks to the fancy food show. Hudson Kitchen had a booth and people would come and taste the product and then they would 
come back again <laughs> and start asking questions. And it was just, it was yes. really great. Yeah, it was really fun to see the reaction of people's faces. So that's like the best, that was the best part, one of the best parts of the show for me. So yeah. cool. So let's talk about the packaging because that was also one of the things that really attracted people to the product. When, when you first when you first came to the kitchen, you were using a different bag with, with a sticker, I believe, right? And so then you transitioned to this packaging. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind it and um, and everything. Yeah. yeah. So initially, when we started, my grandma used to have used to just sell it out of Ziploc bags, like like two dollars, five dollars, whatever, out of a Ziploc bag. That's where the original form Rachel tried it in was a Ziploc bag. And then you know we didn't want to stop any momentum from happening, or like that's just we wanted to keep it going. So we got the clear bags that you guys saw with the sticker on it. That was like the next iteration. And then the next version of it, the final form, which we have right now, or I guess it's not final because it's probably always going to be changing. The form we have right now is kind of an embodiment of where we think kind of the future of snacking is going. You know, we think our snack is a premium product and we want it to have that premium feel without being too like snooty in that way, right? We want people to see like, oh, wow, this is a really well-made product and it has a lot of intention and thought being put into it while not being too like, too like prestigious that you can't just buy a snack online. So I think a lot of the, the choices we made were inspired by what was happening in, in the industry right now as a whole, but it, it really kind of goes for that, that premium feel without being too, too, too big. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think on production side, we wanted good shelf life. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's like Rachel's production side. Yeah. On top of everything. That's kind of important. Said. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, when you're selling a product that's advertised as crispy, it has to remain that way. Exactly. You yeah. know, so we really toyed with like having a window and keeping the window. Basically, like every step that was made was in order to ensure better shelf life. Right. Like Ziploc bag to metalized back bag with clear front was basically just the upgraded Ziploc bag for better shelf life. Right. And then this is like a fully metalized bag with barrier properties. And it was just important to make sure by the time it gets to our customers, right now we're fully D to C online store and everything that it's same condition the way it left our facility. And, and Rachel gave us a lot of pointers when we're designing the bag. It's like, make sure you, you know, this tip for other founders too. It's like you go to the actual store where your product would be at, right? And like having pictures of it or or uh, prototypes of it there and seeing how it would kind of stand against those. And that's kind of like part of the process that we use to kind of come up with this bag because there's many color iterations and right. different designs that we went through that I, I mean, like the person who designed it could probably speak more on it, which is my girlfriend. But <laughs> from what I remember through the process, like a, it was a longer process to get to the bag we have now, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, that's so cool. So wait, how did you guys learn how to make the beef crisp? Can you talk about oh, that? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, learned um, from grandma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rachel, we actually flew Rachel in and she learned directly from grandma herself. You know, Almost. like I, we had, you know, some videos and film that my dad would film of my grandma making it and this whole process. And, you know, one of the most humbling experiences for us or for me as a founder was learning how to make these. You know, I, I thought coming in like was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'm, I'm young. 28 year old that I could just like take this and grandma has all these steps I can just you know we can just this step and do this step to make it more efficient it's like no this is a delicate product and <laughs> Rachel can speak on to more of like that because she's handling all the production yeah. on that side <laughs> when we learned the process I think we tried to make it like in different ways a mm -hmm. few times before and then we went to visit grandma and do it the way she does it at Marlon's you know family's home and it was just like it was like, how did you figure this out? You know, like, how did you, to achieve this exact product, I got to tell you, it's so much more precise than I thought it would be. To get the exact texture and taste, it's like the ratios have to be perfect. Yeah. You can't change the sugar. You can't do this. You can't do that. And I was like, oh, like, and I'm like, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, great. I want to make this like the healthiest it can be, you know, but like, but tasting good. But I was like, and then like I tried it I was like don't touch it like do not <laughs> touch a thing and you know we, we plan to have iterations one day and different flavors and things like that but for right now like this is what grandma made for 30 years and there's a reason why she did it like this and there's a reason why Marlon wanted to start a company out of this yeah. and so 
this will always be our original flavor. If we have variations in the future, that's a different, you know, progress process. But like, it's just, it was actually such a genius recipe and production process that like, I'm trying to make things more efficient and where I can and more consistent for the process of scaling. And some things have been able to do, but like other things, there's a reason why she did it, you yeah. know? And I don't think we can make custom machinery until we are hundreds of millions in revenue <laughs> until we're able to design something. But right now it's uh, fully grandma's um, recipe think, down to like the, yeah. the method of how we lay out the meat. Oh, wow. in, in the marination mm -hmm. process, which is just laborious, but it's okay. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. One of the things that I think is important is that you guys are focused on this one product and not trying to have all these like different types of product. You could be doing like mushroom crisps or whatever, and not to say that that might not be in the future, but like the focus on getting this right, I think is so important. That, and I've seen in the, you know, in our kitchen, like when someone is focused, they're going to be successful. So yeah. that's really important to me. Oh, thank that's you. what I look for, like when I'm looking looking at working with businesses, like yeah. the focus yeah. Is there. Yeah. yeah, we're we're really focused on product and just creating the highest quality product we can. You know, aside from our story, but I think that's just the type of people we are in general. Yeah. That 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 Yez is. We want to make the best quality product and have people be excited every time they get a bag. So Marlon, let's talk about you being a content creator and how you're able to take that experience and kind of lend it to Yez. I mean, because obviously, like, part of what business owners do now is have to create content for for their brand. So can you talk a little bit about what you've been able to do and some of the successes you guys have had with video? Yeah, content creation, I think I'm very lucky. It's a different kind of, like, school that I went to in terms of a business school because running a content creation studio or pr production company is basically what I had to do for five years or six years when I was just doing just solely my production and you kind of have to learn on your own really fast, right? All of a sudden, you know, you're making videos in your bedroom and then like two years later, you have a team of like six and you know, they're asking you like, what do, what do we do? You know, what do we do? And, like, <laughs> and you have to tell them, you have to give them the answers because you're paying for everything and you have to make sure that, you know, the ideas are doing well and people are getting paid and, and all these things. So the transition from being a content creator to actually being a founder was a lot less difficult than I thought because towards the end of kind of, not the end, I'm still a content creator now, but towards the end of my personal, just my production company itself before fully focusing on Yay's, I had to learn to work with other people right. and to be able to delegate and to be able to trust people. And, you know, uh, with Yay's, I'm really excited because building my team was like, I think my hugest, my biggest, if I were to say like my biggest talent besides making content is being able to look for talent and finding people that have that thing i don't know what like i can't describe to you that thing what that mm -hmm. thing is but like when i like looked at rachel in her eyes like and if you could see it right now you're sitting next to rachel yeah, but yeah. when you look at rachel in her eyes like you know like you just know that there is a successful person yeah. in there there's a multi-billionaire in there and i can't explain to you why no i completely i agree quality. i can completely agree with you yeah. i actually have been talking about this internally because i have britney as our sales rep and i'm like we're looking for more rachels like we just yeah. are looking for more people like her and she has that it factor but i want to yeah. be able to like articulate what that is and we haven't been able to do that and so. no and there, that's <laughs> something you just can't buy you can't replicate that you can't yeah. teach that it's just something someone's born with you know right. and same goes for ben ben's not here right now and if you know i think I've never said this, I don't think on a podcast or even to Ben precisely. Mm -hmm. And if I, I think he wrote something that I would say about him, it would be like, oh, he's so good at strategy and analytics and blah, blah, blah. But that's actually not it at all. Like yeah. I'm lucky enough to hang out with Ben outside of work and met him through work and understand all these other facets of him. Like he's so interested in, you know, gardening and culinary world mm -hmm. and biking and all these other things that that other just regular people aren't well-rounded enough to have to become into a team and like kind of be a person, you know, and because there's so many smart people when you're yeah. going to build a team like there's I could go meet a ton of people that went to Harvard or, you know, worked at Bain and different places that could show me how to run a company and, you know, show me my numbers and metrics every day. But right. that's not really what I was looking for. And when finding these, yeah, Rachel and Ben, it was like, wow, I, I'm in a gold mine of people that want to help me bring my vision to life and I want to help them in any way I can too. And, you know, initially when, before even me and Rachel were going to work together, my plan was like, oh, I, 
like when we were just talking about business, I was getting so excited that like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to, my vision for it was like, okay, I'm going to work on Yates really quickly. I'm going to sell it. And then I'm going to work on with you on a project because like, I feel like <laughs> we would just say, we should do this. Like we should make something, right? And so I, I was lucky enough that all the pieces fell together that we're able to work together. But um, yeah, that's like one of the biggest things for me is like, I get to work with wonderful, really smart people yeah. that are smarter than me in their own kind of niches. And that's been kind of my transition right now is understanding like, okay, I can just fully trust Rachel on the production side. I can fully trust Ben on the, you know, strategy and finance side. And I can really think about content as a whole and the vision as on the company as a whole. Mm-hmm. And that is like massive because I don't think a lot of people have that luxury. And I think it's a huge luxury, a huge mental luxury. Uh, and I don't take it for granted at all any days. And I know my team's value and yeah. No, they're definitely amazing. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I just sit back and I'm just like, I love this team. Yeah. I love them. I could not have imagined like, there's no better like pro like strengths and balance weakness than like the team we have here. Like my exact weaknesses are Ben and Marlon's exact strengths. Yeah. It's crazy. Like Marlon will shoot a video and like I'm not used to that yeah. lifestyle. Well, he'll just like start recording things. And I'm just like. like <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to like put this here? He's like, so ignore me. Like, just ignore me. Like, I'm he's doing his thing. And I don't even like it's just like everyone's so autonomous and so good at what they're doing. It's just like it's like seamless integration. And right. it's like a beautiful like symphony. And it's just, it's amazing. And Marlon's just literally a genius of what he does. I could not see things the way he does in mm-hmm. the angle he sees it, and he just gets it. And same with Ben. There's just a different way of looking at how to tackle a business, and it all just is. It's so satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also add to that, like, I don't think there's one way to do a business, especially just from like all the podcasts and research I've done. I've like, right. okay, there's not one way to do this. So in terms of like content creation and building a business, I kind of wanted to do it my own way, which is like my way, Marlins or whatever right. that is. Like we're still in the process right now. So, <laughs> you know, we'll do a one year checkup soon and see what happens. But I, yeah, I, whatever that is and authentic to us and, as long as we're having fun and, you know, building an amazing business with an amazing message that makes the world a better place, I'm happy. So. Cool. So talk about TikTok. There's been a little bit of a frenzy happening in the kitchen. I've been, I've been telling her. I've been telling frenzy her. In the kitchen. We sold it yeah. on TikTok. Oh, yeah. So for, for TikTok, and I think being a creator in the space for so long, you can start to notice like trends or you can mm. start to notice when certain platforms are like heating up or what's kind of like what you call the meta in a certain situation, right? Like at one point, Facebook ads was like the biggest thing, right? People right. wanted to invest in Facebook ads right away because you can hit these targets and certain ROAS that you wanted to hit. Right now, TikTok is really pushing their initiative towards being able to sell products and DTC products online to customers. And I see it as a huge moment in TikTok time where we could actually uh, use the platform really well to mm. you know, grow a brand like this, something that is DTC direct to a consumer right away. And I think it's a huge moment that they're looking for brands like us that are like solid brands that have missions that aren't right. just, I think a lot of the things you might see on there are just like more like candy stores and other mm-hmm. things like that. They're looking for like brands that they could get behind to try to really show people like this is a real marketplace, you know, and um, for us, we've been lucky enough to have some videos do really well for us and, you know, sell out all of our inventory really fast. <laughs> And um, yeah, it was just like a lot of units really quickly and, and it surpassed all of our expectations. I think I remember telling Ben and Rachel, you know, like I know how to do content. The time period is going to be like between, you know, now what is August and December. I don't know what's going to happen, but I would run Rachel through like ideas. I'd be like, okay, what happens if a video goes viral tomorrow? Like, What's right. your plan? Right. So right. we'd always like do these kind of plans over and over and talk about them and talk about them um, just so she had something in mind. But we wouldn't know when it would happen, right? It could happen in December it could ha- and, or it just happened recently here right. in August. And so, you know, luckily Rachel is prepared and she worked super hard. So, there, you know, we, we didn't skip a beat. No, she really did it. Like there no. was like a really plan in place. And then like I see people working and it was great. We yeah. Did it. It went from, okay, one of the orders coming into, oh my God, they're here. They're here. They're here and they're piled up. So. And we're like chasing down the mailman and everything. So. Janelle has been saving me. And I tell Marlon that all the time, I'm just like, Janelle would just save me. The mailman came and she took care of it. Yeah. It's good that we have, we're on a first name basis with a lot of our 
delivery people. So That's amazing. That's a good thing. I just give them some yays and hopefully they like it enough to yeah. like, you know, care about us. But I, I know they're busy and it's just, it's a lot. It's, it's a whole, it takes a village. Yeah. It definitely does. That's for sure. So can you guys, both of you talk a little bit about how entrepreneurship has changed you? I know you both have basically been entrepreneurs for, for, for quite some time, but I'd love to, to hear about your thoughts on how great it is to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> go ahead, Rachel. You can go first. I really do think about how grateful I am to get to do this. Mm -hmm. Like I know, you know, the, and I see it with just like within my relationship with my boyfriend, you know, he took the corporate route and I took the entrepreneurship route. And we're both very much the person who's interested in the entrepreneurship route. And I'm just grateful that I was able to kind of choose my destiny in a way. Like, I don't have control of fully what happens in a, you know, startup. No one really does. But, like, it's just, it just feels, it feels different. Your wins are so much bigger. Right. You know, and the wins are for the people that you care about, the team, the company you built this with, the team that you love. But on you know the contrary, your 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 problems and your lows are like life ending, and it just feels like the world is gonna like burn. But you know it's not. I'm yes, just being dramatic. The, the lows are low. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean there are times where I'm just like, okay, why did I do this? And then, but luckily the highs. The second you feel that high, and I had someone who told me, who was also an entrepreneur, a very successful one, who said like when you when you have those highs, you got to record yourself. You record mm. yourself. You write those things down. You make a folder to look back when you're in the lows yeah. because those highs should be worth all of your lows. Mm -hmm. And that's so absolutely right. And then Ben shared this wonderful um, meme that I think about all the time. It was like, you know, the alien hands one. Which one? The one like two weeks ago. He was Describe like. Describe it to us. He was For the like, people that can't see. <laughs> and we'll, we'll link it up in the show notes also. But don't yeah. know. Oh, I don't know. It's a weird one. <laughs> there was an alien picture on there. But basically, it was just like, you know, corporate versus entrepreneurial route. And it was saying how the entrepreneurial route, it's not that like you don't have problems in the corporate route. They tend to become repetitive. You know, in the entrepreneurial route, there's a new problem every single time. Yeah. And it related it, it made a metaphor of like six alien hands slapping at you at one time. And you're just like, <laughs> but all the hands look different because they're an alien. And it's like, okay, you know, and that's like a great way of describing yeah. it because it's like, what is this? I've never seen it before and it's all hitting me at once. Yeah. So, yeah, I would just, it's very relatable. <laughs> How about you, Marlon? <laughs> For me, being an entrepreneur, man, I, I think one, it's just, been in my family for so long I I didn't even realize it it's one of those things you wake up one day and you're like oh like you hear stories of your mom selling you know noodles outside to pay for rent or your grandma selling beef jerky outside to pay for rent and and you don't coincide those things of like entrepreneurial but then as you get older you start to go like oh like that's what they're doing they were running their own business you you start to think of those things and I think about you know what could I really do and I try all these things that I can do and I go Oh, I like I can't do anything else. Like I I can only do this. Like I, I I literally can't. Like I think Ben, you know, he could go work at another, you know, Fortune 500 company or go like do something else. Or Rachel, I'm sure could do anything. I, I'm like, I, I could only do this. I feel like I could really only like this is my one thing. And I'm like, I, I that's how it's kind of always felt for me. And um, I'm learning to. It makes it forces you to kind of like work on yourself more too. And I really believe that. And I really. I'm a huge kind of advocate for self growth and uh, kind of like taking your ego out of everything. And you learn that really quickly being an entrepreneur and a leader. I, you have to be able to look at yourself and be like, how am I communicating? How am I there for others today? You know, and how can I get my head out of my own butt to mm. think about everyone else and yeah. take care of my team? Yeah. Um, and that wasn't always the easiest thing for me, you know, being a, a YouTuber or a content creator, you know, it's me, me, me all the time. And being like kind of a more uh, traditional entrepreneur now, it's like, how can I think about service for others and right. taking care of people around me? And uh, that's, uh, I think, the most amazing thing about being an entrepreneur is you get to work on yourself and create things that help the world. And I think you have a, like this, like platform that you get to have that you can shape and mold it in any creative way you want to. And I think that's really exciting. Yeah, that's cool. So let's, so let's, let's talk about self-care a little bit. I know that as entrepreneurs, we are constantly working and thinking about their businesses. Talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing to just take a break and relax and 
stuff. If I you like are. how we're both putting our hands on our chin. We're <laughs> You're like, hmm. Because mm. if our significant other watches this, <laughs> no, I, I think the most part, the best part is like my family and my, my support system keeping me grounded. And luckily that I have a great one because sometimes I wasn't able to find that balance. Like sometimes I, I just want to keep going and I feel like Marlon and I really connect on that part. We're just, we're just like, go, go, go. Yeah. But like, life happens too like yeah. life has been so fast these past few years that like i have to remember to like bring everything else that's important with it like yeah. my life is not just my job not just my company and it feels weird to say that because i'm still working on really learning that but i think it's really trying to separate what time is appropriate right and of course sometimes things bleed you know but really working hard to find that balance so um, I'm really trying hard to like make sure I get enough pickleball time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love pickleball and, uh, and you know, just get enough time to connect with like the people that matter in your life. And, and cause they won't always be there right. waiting for you to finish what your own goals are. If you don't give them the time throughout that. So I'm still definitely working on it, but I think I'm getting hopefully better. Good. Yeah. For me, it's, learning I, I don't i don't like when people say this too but like balance as much as i hate to admit it but it's a balance that's sometimes not always balanced if that makes sense like yeah. it's the balance of being able to work really hard and also take care of myself and my significant other and yeah. setting those clear boundaries with myself and letting myself know that like this opportunity is not going to run away from me and not feeling that kind of scarcity in that in that moment and right. and knowing that you need to take care of yourself because We've experienced this before, Marlon. Like, you know, you worked, you know, all these years before and you got burnt out and then you don't feel creative and then you really can't help the people around you, you right. know? And so it's really important to take care of yourself. And I can't stress taking care of yourself and kind of your mental health, putting that really high up on the totem pole. Because if you can't, you know, have a healthy body and then your energy starts to lack and everyone really suffers from it. So Things I do, I've always been a really big runner. So I ran my first marathon last year. Oh, great. And like me and my girlfriend have a really great morning routine to kind of like, we call it our morning armor to like mm -hmm. set us up for the day. So we have a really strong morning routine. And I think, you know, it could be different for everybody. For And we've had a lot of different testing periods of like, okay, maybe work out in the evening or maybe right. work out at night. But for me, it's like, okay, I just have to, it's a non-negotiable. I have to work out in the morning right when I wake up yep. and then kind of get in our like, our whatever that would be, right? My 10 minutes of meditation or reading time just to like really kind of get myself there before checking any emails or texts and then getting off to the day, you know, and that yeah. I find that helps me stay more balanced. You know, I, that's not something I can do perfectly all the time, but I try to get it in a row as much as I can. Yeah, that's um, cool. Like I'm a big workout in the morning person too. Like I'm, up, I, I go to a five o'clock class. Oh, wow. I take classes like, and so it's easier. Like they're small, like it's 12 people. They do all the programming and I just show up. Yeah, but it's 5 a.m. and I'm like, I get up at 3:45 and I drink my get my coffee and listen, pop a podcast on wow. and like drive to the gym. So like, yeah, that's my thing. And that's like yeah. your time, you that's know. And that's yeah. that's yeah, Janava time, and like yeah. you can't trade that for anything. And I don't like that's amazing. Yeah, so cool. So, what are you guys thankful for? Oh, I'd be here for a while if I needed everything. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the support system, back to this wonderful team, and the team includes everyone from Marlon and Ben to my wonderful Sheree, Paulette, Jaite, and honestly, the whole Hudson Kitchen staff. I'm not even just saying that because of, like, what we're doing right now, but, like, yeah, I, I mean it. You know, like, I think Marlon knows that, like, it's a support system, and it's, like, it really is just feeling – it's it's all about your headspace, and yeah. everyone around is, like – they're just you're on the same page yeah. you're going for the same goal and it yeah. feels good and it and they're there to support you and you know we all have our bad days and it's really really nice that i have the people we have people in our yeah. corner and uh i'm thankful that i get to play with beef jerky every day <laughs> beef crisp you beef have a really crisp. yes you have a really great team together the ladies are awesome they're so <laughs> wonderful i yeah they're amazing i love them all i really do <laughs> Yeah, I, I have so much to be thankful for. And, you know, I have a gratitude journal every day and there's only three spots. So I'm like, okay, 
what are, what are my three thankful <laughs> things you know but yeah. i always have to have my family in there because i i am just really grateful for my family but that extends i guess when i write it right about to my team and to my significant other and and not just my immediate family it's just right. everyone in my life that comes into contact with me i consider family you know hudson kitchen's family now because oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah because we're, we're doing this together we're yeah. in this together yeah. and I'm really grateful and thankful to just be alive and experience the things we experience, you know, from the lows, like we're talking about, to the highs um, of of this kind of living on this spinning rock thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at Hudson Kitchen, we have what I call the money bell in the lobby that we like to ring when we're celebrating something. So I'm wondering what you guys are celebrating. Oh, the TikTok, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we celebrate the the TikTok, and I mean the our reviews. I'm most proud of our reviews when people get yeah. it. Like, yeah. and I see the handwritten reviews. People take time to take a picture with them and let us know that the product was like we already like. I try to place the product in in their mind like how good it's gonna be already, and I'm kind of like there's a balance between that because I don't want to overhype it, but at the same time for them to be as excited or even yeah. more. Uh, for for it to like surpass their expectations even more that's a huge win for me and for Rachel because you know she's the one creating the product and uh, it's just an incredible feeling to have someone actually truly become a fan of your product so every time we have a real fan I'd love to to ring the money bell <laughs> because that that's all we can ask for you know it's just creating true raving fans yeah awesome well, thank you guys I appreciate you being here thank let you. everyone know where they can find out about yay snacks and both of you Yes, yes. You can find us on uh, www.snackyays.com and on Instagram and all platforms at snackyays. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The Food Means Business podcast was produced by Hudson Kitchen. It is recorded at the studio at Carney Point and mixed and edited by Wild Home Podcasting. Our theme song is by Damien DeSandes, and I'm your host, Janaba Johnson Jones. Follow Hudson Kitchen on Instagram at the Hudson Kitchen. And to get food business bites right in your inbox, sign up for our newsletter at thehudsonkitchen.com forward slash newsletter. Listen, follow, and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get podcasts. Until next time. <laughs>